thing real quick. I want to move the needle today. Hey, Amen. I, I just don't, I don't believe that God would have us to get up, get dressed, drive through this traffic just to go through the motions. Amen. Yeah. Amen. I really believe that it is God's intent to move the needle today. And so I, I, I want to remind you of a scripture. I don't want to be morbid, but I want to remind you of a scripture that says there is a time to be born and there's a time to die. Yeah. Amen. I want to free somebody up today. I want to free you up today. I want to free you up. I just want to tell you no matter what happens in your life, at some point you're going to die. I want to free you up today. Amen. I want somebody to walk out of here that stress that's been on your life. There's no reason to be stressed. You're going to die. There's nothing you can do about it. I'm just being real. I want to help somebody there. You're going to die. Amen. I want you to know today that if you become the millionaire that you desire, you're going, they're going to put you in a box as a millionaire. Amen. When they put you in the box, you're not going to be able to take none of your money with you. Amen. I just want to encourage somebody that you're going to die. If you make the basketball team or you don't make the basketball team, you're going to die. If you get married or you don't, you're going to die. They're not going to bring your spouse in the box with you when you die. And if you and your spouse die at the exact same time, they're going to have two different boxes for you. And they're going to bury you differently. You, you're going to go to God separately. Hey, man, I just want to encourage somebody today. You're going to die. So there's no need to stress. There's no need to worry. No matter what you do with your life, you're going to die. At some point, you're you out of here. Hey, man, you, you, it, there's a time to be born and there's a time to die. And God knows when that time is. That don't even have nothing to do with you. Amen. Your death doesn't even have anything to do with you. Like, you don't get to decide when you die. You say, what do you mean by that? Well, there have been people who try to commit suicide. They're still with us. There have been people who jumped off a bridge. They're still with us. There are people who try to take their life, and they're still here. Why? Because it ain't their time. So I want you to know you're going to die, and there's nothing you could do about it. But what I would hope that you would do is I hope you would live. No, no, that's, what, that's my hope. My hope is that you would live. And I'm hoping from this point forth, you'll live drama free. Just whatever Jeremiah 29, 11 is, whatever God's plans and thoughts for you. You know, people call me all the time. My parents are sick. Look, my mother-in-law was diagnosed with cancer 2008 probably. And there was people crying for it. They dead. They was crying for it. They gone. There were people that was, oh, I'm so sorry you got cancer. They got cancer. They gone. I don't know what they had. Some people car accident. So it's just different stuff, but they, she's still here and they go. They were weeping for her. They should have been weeping for themselves. So, so I want to start again. You're going to die. I just want to encourage you. <laughs> Amen. I want to encourage you. Amen. I want to encourage you. Amen. Because you, you like, you're trying to make it like if you make all this money, you're not going to die. If you get this relationship, everything, you can get married, you're still going to die. Whatever it is, you're trying to, a law degree, a medical degree, I want to be a doctor. You're going to die, and they're not taking your coat in there, your medals ain't going in there, your certificates ain't going in there, your degree ain't going in there. You might barely be dressed when you go in there. Depending on who bury you, they might take some of your stuff. I'm just being real. <laughs> Depending on what family you come from, some of them things that you was holding on to, they taking that with them, and they ain't putting it in the grave with you. Now, prior to the grave, they're going to tell you at your, oh, mama, all that, go, you go, we go, all that, you're going to die, and they're going to take that stuff with you. I'm just being real. Whatever house you bought, somebody else is going to be living in it. Whatever car you're driving, right, somebody else is going to be in it. You're going to die, but my hope is that you would live. That's my hope, and a lot of y'all just being honest, you're not, you ain't even started living yet. You haven't started living yet, and you definitely haven't started living the, the life God wants you to live. You might be living your cultural, your like family life. You ain't start living the way God wants you to live. And I just want to blow your mind. I was talking to somebody the other day, and it's like, man, what's that? I'm like, bro, I'm good. If I die right now, I, I did it. I did it. At 16 years old, I gave my life to Christ, and I really gave my life to Christ. I swear I ain't perfect, but I literally gave my life to Christ. Don't nothing mean as much to me as God. I literally surrendered my whole life. and like, what do you want me? You want me to speak? You want Whatever you want me to do, I'm going to do it. You want me to leave what I thought was a great life to go back to Michigan? Whatever you want me to do, Lord, I'm going to do it. So I die right now. I lived a great life. I don't, I'm, I'm good. Whatever. I, 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 I went beyond what I think, thought I could do. I went beyond anything I could imagine for myself. And so I know what it's like to live. And I'm not talking about money and stuff. I'm talking about purpose. I figured out what God called me to do. I figured it out. I figured out what God wanted me to say. I figured out Monday, Tuesday, when I figured out every day, what do you, and I just, I, I want you at some point to get to a point where you stop chasing all this stuff 
and you get to a point where you really live life and you can go to bed at night and you feel good about yourself. So, so God told me, I just want to say the word, God gave me the word for you. Man, God is so good. Like, this, this is why I don't like slides and stuff because, like, I got to give you all the slides on Wednesday, but God don't give me the thought to Saturday. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? They're like, we need the slides by Thursday. I'm like, God ain't even spoke to me yet. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I just got to make up something, you know what I'm saying, so we can do some slides, right? And then they get mad at me in the morning like, E, you switching it. I ain't tell you that. That's what God wanted me to say in the first place. You just needed the slides, so I gave you what you needed. But God didn't even say nothing to me until 8.15 this morning. And so it's going to be some stuff that ain't on the slide, but I'm going to need you to write it down, all right? <laughs> so God told me to tell you this is the word that's going to free you up, singular. Hallelujah. Somebody, you about to go to another level economically, you're about to go to another level in your relationship, singular, singular. And when, when God gave me that word, one of the things I began to see, you know, is a street, and it said one way. Hey Amen. Praise God. For a lot of us, we're not where God wants us to be, or for a lot of us, we're not even where we want to be. And a lot of it has to do with, is you're not singular. So just go with me, because the slides are not up, but I, I promise you it's in the word. When you get a chance, Google it. Right, but you'll see, you'll see in the word, when you follow Christ, you'll see him saying a lot of times, Old Testament, New Testament, the Father and I are one. Yeah, yep, singular. Singular is purpose. I, I came to do the will of my Father. <laughs> like, real, like you study the life of Christ, he, he ain't got eight things he's doing. He ain't got 20 things he's doing. He ain't got six things he's doing. He only got two things he's doing. On this earth, he had what? Okay, Old Testament, let us create man after our, uh, 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 let us, they were one. New Testament, the Father and I, I go to do the will of the Father that sent me. Singular. When you look at Satan, it said legion, meaning. <laughs> I don't want to get deep. I just want to show you the word. When you talk about Satan and you talk about Lucifer, you speak many. When you talk spirit, when you talk God, you speak one. Hey Amen. I just, I want to help you all out. For a lot of us, well, individually, we're not doing well. We many. We many. Your goals and what you're doing on Monday is two different things. Your, 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 what you're saying you want to do, like what we're saying we want to do and then what we do is like, it's many. I just started, you know, with my boy Ron on the health board. And I'm looking at, he like, no variation. I'm like, oh, okay, cool. But I'm looking at variation. I'm like, why is there variation? Like when I'm at the crib, solid, when I get on the road. I, but I'm looking like, okay, I know what I want to do. But when I get on the road, I'm somebody different. When I'm home, I'm one person. When I'm on the road, I'm like, whoa, it looks like environment is stronger than me. It's like when I'm at the crib and I got everything, in, like right there, I'm straight. But when I'm on the road and I don't got everything and stuff switched, oh, and then it's like, whoa, but, but I'm in the airport alone where I'm supposed to be. I don't have what I'm supposed to have, so I can't do it. It's like, yo, E, you, you okay, at the crib, you this person. Like, who, why am I many people? Why am I not, like, okay, when I'm weird, I'm doing this, but then when I get with my kids and then when I'm at Cali, and I'm, in, I'm like, God, what? God is like, you are many, son. But it's okay. It's okay. You're going to get to one. And once you get to one, you're going to get different results when you get to one, but you got to get to one. And now you won spiritually, your merit, you won, but you're not one when it comes to, and you got to get to one. And so I'm telling you, a lot of us, we, we got, we, we on the, it's, we, we all over the place. And so say it with me, singular. And I just want you to think about an area in your life where it's like, God, like, first of all, let me just say this to you. This is why I told you you're going to die. So I'm going to give you two hopes. One, you're going to die. Right? That's the first hope. The second hope is God is with you. Now, I'm just being real. I was talking to my boy today, and I was like, you know, singular. He was like, man, E, that's my problem. I'm all over the place. I said, bro, relax. Singular. He was like, I know, but I'm, I said, bro, just pray. You good. Just because you're not in today don't mean you can't be in tomorrow. I used to be a high school dropout. I got a PhD now. I used to be a high school dropout. I got on multiple homes. I own so many with more of them. I don't even know what I own. I used to not have a car. I got a bunch of them. My kids got cars. We give them cars away. So just because you were something yesterday, it don't mean tomorrow you're not. Relax. You're stressing yourself out. Relax. Just listen, here's the only, here's the only stress I want you to have. The only stress I want you to have is knowing a reality and not telling God the reality. That's the only stress I want you to have. 
So once you know you got a challenge, at what, the only stress you should have is not telling God you got the challenge. That's it. Like once you figure out what you are, just tell God, like, God, I got this problem. God, I got this problem. God, I got this problem. And I promise you, if he don't fix it in a week, he's going to fix it in two. He don't fix it in two, he's going to fix it in four. I know. I was a high school dropout. Like, I couldn't really read or write at a certain age. I got a PhD. Now, I know how to write. I promise you, I flunked English like two, three times. I couldn't get the, 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 the topic, the body, body conclusion. I couldn't get that to save my life. I, don't, I just, I don't know. Like, I couldn't write a topic out of if I had a topic and I did the body, I would be all over the place. I didn't even know why I had to do a conclusion if I did a topic. Like, what's the, that don't even make sense. What are we concluding? What's the top is the same as the bottom. I, I got to rewrite what I said at the top? Like, that don't even make sense. I couldn't support, I was all over, does that make sense? I know how to write now. Do not get overwhelmed because you're not that right now. If you're not that right now, that's great. You have a savior in Jesus Christ. It's okay if you're not there right now. You wouldn't need a God if you could do it all by yourself. You actually need a God because you're not one. But what separates you from God is you not have singular purpose. You, you like, I messed up. Tell him you messed up. He already know. Tell him where you need to be fixed. He already knows. Tell him you broke. And every time you get money, can't. just be honest and he's going to fix it. So I want to give you an opportunity before you leave today. Wherever you are right now, I promise you in 30 days you don't have to be there. Uh, I began this health journey. I'm not where I am, but I promise you I went from the extra large to the large. We're gonna I'm going to take that. I'm going to take that. You know what I'm saying? Like the gut ain't popping out the shirt no more. I'm going to take that. I'm not where I want to be, but it ain't what it was. I'm just trying to tell you, and because you're not exactly where you want to be, you're stressing yourself out instead of thanking God that you're not where you were four weeks ago, a year ago, five years ago. You're not where you used to be, and you're on your way somewhere you've never been before. I didn't get a PhD overnight. It didn't happen overnight, but it happened. And I have all the privileges and rights of a person from Michigan State with a PhD. And, I, and all the rights that everybody in the world has with a PhD. It did not happen overnight, but it happened. That's so singular. Come on, singular. singular. We can't even do that right. Okay, one more time. <laughs> singular. singular. I just want you to watch. In the spirit, they are one. In Satan, they are many. Legions, for they are many. Read it when you get home, and they all scattered everywhere. It's many. And we got to get from many to one. So some of us, I'm a Christian. We are, but it's the many that's messing you up. Yeah, you do believe in God, but you believe in a lot of other stuff too. I was talking about somebody the other day. We was kicking one of my home girls. I'm trying to take it to the next level. I was tripping. Like, she killing the game in terms of her profession. And we started talking about God. And then she was like, yeah, I love the Lord. You know what I'm saying? But I was talking to my person that reads my hands. I was like, what? <laughs> what you just say? I just, I'm, not, I'm not mad that you went to the horoscope, but you just, those two different things. <laughs> you, know what I'm you done went from Christ on the cross to the horoscopes and what, and she had did your hand and told you on your hand. I was like, wow. And then we kept talking and she was like, yeah. And sometimes she'd be off. I'm like, and sometimes she, I'm sure she is <laughs> off sometimes. I'm sure she is. <laughs> right. And there was one other thing she mentioned. So I'm like, wow, you got three different gods. Or meaning you have three different philosophical beliefs that are guiding you. Before we go into work, I just want to make sure, am I making sense? And so I'm trying to show you what our problem is. Our problem is I, I, I got the one thing that's telling me, oh, eat what Adam and Eve, you know what I'm saying? Like somebody said, oh, what should you eat? Whatever Eve recognized, that's what you should eat. I know that. Like whatever Eve, like Eve went, like graham crackers, Eve wouldn't recognize that. If like if Adam and Eve came back right now and they saw some graham crackers, they wouldn't know what is that. They wouldn't know what graham crackers were. <laughs> What's graham crackers? <laughs> they would know what an apple was. Or they would know what a pear is. Right? So I got two things going on. I got one thing going on. I know what Adam and Eve would eat. But I also got this thing called taste buds going on. And they, they you know what I'm saying, it's two things. So one thing be like, let's go, eat. I'm like, let's go. And the other thing be like, hold up, don't forget about me. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Like, I didn't even grow up. Nobody even helped me when I grew up. It was like, we're going to eat vitamin E, vitamin D. I didn't even know until I went to Oakwood and got the health message that you're supposed to be eating, sir. I never, my mom ain't never go. We eating vitamin E today. 
what? We never ate vitamin Z. I don't know what that is. I, we, I, I knew that today we having grits and eggs. Before you go to school, we're going to make some hash browns. I, nobody, I didn't know what was in potatoes. Somebody said a starch. I don't know what a starch is. I just know bacon, eggs is for breakfast. Does that make sense? And then I get this other philosophy that says you're supposed to eat what eat. It's two different things. And so what I want us to pray for is whatever those things are that are not of God, slowly but surely we're going to let those things go and we're going to start doing what the low abs do. Does that make sense? Good. Let's go to the Word. Y'all ready? Come on, y'all ready? Listen to me very closely. This don't happen but once a month. This is an opportunity to get away from your religion. This don't mean you leave your religion. This is an opportunity to get away from some stuff so you can really start seeing what God wants you to do and then go back to it. <laughs> I'm going to say one more time because I don't want to scare you. Somebody just got scared. I'm no, look, I, I have a, all my degrees are in education. I'm a teacher by trade. That's what I do. Listen to me very closely. I taught K through 12. Then I was at Michigan State. I am no longer in the school system. I left the school system, became the number one motivational speaker in the world, wrote a New York Times bestseller. God started doing some stuff for me economically, put me in a different category economically. Now I'm back in schools. And I'm doing way more for kids in school than I did when I was in school. Are you hearing me? So I'm saying sometimes you got to come out of <laughs> so you can get with God and go back in stronger. Amen. Because some of us, we would worship the thing that we in instead of the God who put us in the thing. Now we worship in the thing now. That became our God now. And now all, every decision we make is based on what they said. And God like, yo, that religion got more of your ears than I got. I can't even tell you nothing new. <laughs> See, I can't teach you nothing new. Does that make sense? And so we're going to come out today so we can go back in better. Praise God. All right, let's go to the first slide. I don't got the clicker. They got the clicker. All right, and I tried my hardest to do what they asked you to do and what God told me to do. All right, that slides by Thursday, amen, and the word by today. Hallelujah, praise God. All right, so, so, so what God told me is most humans will never be successful. Most humans will never be highly successful, and most humans probably won't even be successful because of these things that we're going to talk about today. How many of y'all ready to be Jeremiah 29, 11, whatever that means? Now, let me say it for those of you who don't know what it means. For God says, for I know the plans that I have for you. So some of us, we into our parents' plans for us, our spouse plans, our own plans, our university's plan, the church plan. Listen to me very closely. I'm so glad, I'm so glad that God is in control. If, God, if I had my way, I would still be at the church I was at in Detroit. I would still be at uh, 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 Bethel 70. I'd still be there right now. I was never trying to go nowhere. I, I, I'm ashamed of myself that God called me out of the church, which I, didn't, I wasn't born in in the first place. I didn't even go to church coming up. Like, I, we never prayed in my house. We never prayed in my crib. My mom, we never prayed. We never read the Bible. We didn't go to church. I'm so ashamed that God did not raise me in the church so that he could put me in the church and then allow me to go back in the world where a lot of folk who ain't really fooling with church like that and I could bring them back to a relationship with God. I'm so embarrassed that I fought God because I love the church so much. I love what the church did for me so much. I love what Oakwood did for me so much that I wanted to stay where I was blessed. And God said, I never put you there in the first place just to be blessed. I put you there to train you up, to take you back to where you were from so you can help people who were like you get in the... I'm so embarrassed. I'm fighting God. Like, I ain't trying, people, like God, like, they like, the church trying to kick me out, God trying to kick me out. I'm like trying to stay. God said, if you don't get your butt out that church, I got a work for you to do. I don't have a building for you, son. I got a work for you, son. I don't have a building. I don't want you to talk to people that's been getting it their whole life. I need you to give it to some folks in the way who hadn't been getting it. Oh, but I'm, I'm not singular of purpose. I'm praying to God, but I'm listening to people. Uh, you, I want to say that one more time in case you missed that one. I was praying to God every day, but I was listening to people. 
God has specifically told me what he wanted me to do. I said, God, I can't do that. He said, why can't you do that, son? I said, because if I get kicked out to church, then I'm not going to be able to see my friends because it's not just about going to a church. We all went to Oakwood. So when I go to D.C., I'm going to see somebody. When I go to Philly, I'm going to see somebody. And if I get kicked out to church, then I can't go. God said, have you lost your, what? <laughs> Feed my sheep. He, that's what he told I was listening to Experiencing God, the Bible. And he said, to, uh, to, uh, do you love me? Yes, I love you guys. Over there. Okay. FEMA, do you love me? Yes, I love you. Do you love me? I said, yes, I love you, Lord. Then do what I'm telling you to do. The church is not why you where you are where you are. You are where you are because I was in the church while you were there. The school ain't, you ain't where you are because of the school. You are where you are because I was with you while you was at the school. So you got to stop. It's some stuff you listen to, some people you listen to. You listening to you. It's saying it all needs to stop. And we need to be singular of what? We need to be singular of purpose. We need to be one with God. And once we just go, see, okay, God told me to show you what happened. So you going this way, doing what God told you to do, and then you heard something, then you turn around and you went back this way. And then you was like, ah, nah, I'm going to go this way. And then you start going that way. God said, tell my people, if you keep listening to them and me and you, you ain't going to never get to where I'm trying to get you to get to. Just go where I told you to go and look at what's going to happen. So I want to show you this. This is Paul. How many of y'all said y'all believe in the word? Amen. Come on. You believe in the word. Amen. So God told me to show you the first thing that's stopping us as believers from being as highly successful as he wants us to be. This is what's stopping us. How many just honestly, you like, man, God, I'm not where I want to be. I just want to see your hand. I'm not where I want to be. P period. I'm not there. Good. So let's make today the day that you take one more step toward being where God wants you to be. I'm, can, I, can, can I be honest? I was, talking about, I was talking to somebody the other day that I love, and they were stressed. I said, what you stressed for? I said, why are you stressed? They said, what you mean, why am I stressed? I said, aren't you living where you want to live? Yeah. Isn't this your dream place? Yeah. I said, man, you're on the balcony overlooking it. Wow, you got a little water. Isn't this where you say you want to be? Yeah, this is where I want to be. I said, you driving. Isn't that the car you said you wanted? Yeah, that's the car I said I wanted. Don't you have the clothes you say you wanted? Yeah, I said, what you stressed out about then? No, I said, no, no, what are you stressed out about? For real, be honest with me. Tell me the truth. Why are you stressed out? I don't know. I said, I could tell you why you're stressed out. You're stressed out because you're where you want to be, but you don't know if other people know you where you want to be. I'd be watching online, bro. I'd be seeing people online killing the game. But there's people online who killing the game, and it's not enough for them that they're killing the game. They got to have other people know that they're killing the game. Cats like, E, I thought you was balling. I don't never see nothing. I didn't get married for it to be online. I don't want to show you. We did really eat breakfast together today. <laughs> we did. We did. <laughs> it just wasn't online, but we did, for real, have breakfast together today. We did travel together. We sat next to each other. It just wasn't online. Yeah. I didn't get married for it to be online. I really do own a home in California. You hadn't seen it online because God didn't give it to me to show it to you online. I really do have a pool in the backyard. I'm not making it up. But I didn't get a pool to show you I got a pool. A pool was a part of Jeremiah 29, 11. I Ask and you shall. I just said, God, I grew up in Detroit. We had the mobile pools. <laughs> Y'all don't know nothing about that. <laughs> they drive that big 18 wheel and everybody getting that joker. It ain't, I'm talking about that water brown. <laughs> we had no pool. I just said, God, you bless me. I just, my wife got MS. I want her to do the aerobic therapy in the ward. I just, can you give me a pool? Ask and you shall seek and you shall. I got it. I said to this young person, you got everything you've ever wanted. People just don't know you got it and you ain't happy because they don't know. Singular purpose. You got what you asked for. Some of you, you're not happy, and you're not happy not because you're not happy. You're not happy because other stuff and other people are in your ear and what people think about where you are and what you're doing. If you're okay with what you're doing, you should be okay with what you're doing. So what? They don't understand what you're doing. So here's the first principle that the Lord told me to give you, Philippians 3 and 13 and 14. Brethren, Paul said, I ain't perfect. He said, I count not myself to have apprehended. I ain't got, I'm not all of that yet. I ain't got everything, God. I'm not. But he said, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind. Many of us are not where God wants us to be because God has told you to be in the future. You keep going back to the past. 
I'm just being real. You wake up, you might have one week in the future, and then something hit, something happened, something triggered, and now you done went back to the past. Uh, well, 2010, uh, who cares about 2010? Who cares? No, there are many of you in this room, you are tormenting yourself with the past. You keep going back. Paul says a Christian, a man of God, ha hands down, probably one of the greatest men of God ever. And I don't know if anybody in the New Testament can get with my man. Hands down, Hall of Famer. Hands down, he got the jacket. Hands down, nobody in the New Testament outside of Christ can hold water with Paul. Paul can go to the Old Testament and rank up with Moses and Joshua. Paul is the real deal. Paul said one of his skill sets, we try to be so spiritual, we overlook it. Paul said one of my skill sets, the reason why I got to where I got to is because I don't count myself to have, have. he said there are some things I don't want to do that I find myself doing. He said, the good that I would, I do if not. And the evil that I don't want to do, I find myself doing. Paul said, I have not arrived yet. I have not apprehended. I ain't got my crown yet. But this one thing I know for sure, forget those things which are behind. I'm saying you read the text, but it wasn't deep enough, so you ain't break it. Paul says, I forgot the past. And many of us are still in the past. You wake up, you might have one week that's good, two weeks that's good, and then boom, you go back to the past. Paul says, God told me to tell you if you're going to blow up, if you're going to get to the next level, one of the things you got to do is forget 2012. It's over. It's done. You shouldn't even be back there. God, like I got all kind of stuff right here in 2023. You talking about how broke you was 20 years ago. Who cares? Who cares? You talking about how you wasn't in no good relationship? Who cares? I was talking to somebody the other day, and they was like, let me tell you, this is what the devil will do. The devil will take your past. I was talking to him, and I was asking him some questions, and I was like, yo, you remember the last time you? And they was like, man, I can't even remember the last. I said, you can't remember the last time you had a good time? I can't remember a good time. I said, what can you remember? I can only remember when stuff started getting stressful. I said, man, the devil then took you to the past so much that your whole life is your past. What? You can't even remember a good time. What? What in the world? You don't remember eight? <laughs> I said, what are you doing at eight? <laughs> at 15, I don't remember good, nothing good at 15. I said, what do you remember? I remember when life got difficult. Wow. I'm talking to somebody in the room. That's what you want. All you've been thinking about is the past so much that it's become your reality. You can't even enjoy living right now. You are actually alive right now. Two arms, two hands. You, actually, you, you are actually breathing. You actually, you in your right mind. And there's nothing happening for you in the positive because all you keep thinking about when Paul says, I forget those things which are behind me. And then what did he say? He said, I reached forth. I don't know if y'all caught that. Paul said, I ain't got nothing to do with none of that behind me. And he had a lot of stuff behind him. You in this room right now, I've talked to some of you, and you said you were a convict. Who told you you was a convict? Where you get that term from? That's not a godly term. That's some term some man gave you. He said, I ain't going to never be able to get a job. He, who is he? He might not be alive tomorrow. He told you a convict. I, I did this, and ain't nobody going to forgive me. They, you already been forgiven by the person that needs to forgive you. <laughs> She said she ain't gonna never forgive me. She ain't got to. He said, my daddy said he ain't gonna never forgive me. Your daddy don't have to forgive you. Your daddy need forgiveness. Go to the person that don't need forgiveness. God don't need forgiveness. He gives out forgiveness. If God forgave you, he told the woman, forget the people who are putting you in front of me and trying to stone you. Forget them, go. What was he saying? Forget your past. All these people represent your past. Forget them. They got a past too. Let me say it one more time. God had to remind her, everybody that's trying to convict you right now, they got a past too. They got skeletons in their closet too. They done done some stuff. If I open up their closet, I'm going to blow up them too. Don't worry about her. Go forward. Go beyond this point. Go and get what I got for you. Go. Get out of here. Go. You don't belong here. Go. This is a big, go. What's the word? Before he told her don't sin no more, he didn't start with don't. He could have said, sin no more and go. 
I know English now. Whatever you put first is the subject. Whatever you put first is the subject and is the main theme of the sentence. The first thing he told her was not even a subject. He gave her a verb. He said, go. Why? Because when you do action, it takes you to a different level. Nouns don't necessarily mean nothing. The verb is action. He told her, go, meaning what? Go into your future right now. I want you to stop. And I want you to go where you want to go. I want you to live where you want to live. I want you to go what you want your relationships to look like. I'm going to tell you all the truth. All right, watch this. This is deep. So there was a point in my life, uh, I don't know when it happened, to be honest with you. It could have happened after uh, I I whipped my daughter. I had never whipped her before. So we had went to California, and there was something that I needed her to do, and she was like, I ain't doing it. I should have left her alone because you can't whip out character. She's just strong. But from that point, our relationship changed. And what God showed me two years later, I was like, man, God, you know, she don't really talk to me like she used to talk to me, like it's whatever, whatever, whatever. And it's like, and God was like, what's the problem? I was like, well, the problem is we ain't really, and he was like, no, no, the problem is not that y'all don't talk the way y'all want, y'all used to talk. The problem is when you whipped her and she stopped talking to you, you got trapped in when she stopped talking to you. And so what happened was when you got stopped and when she stopped talking to you, you got trapped in that. You move based on the fear of her not talking to you instead of moving like her father. You should just move like you're her father. You know what I'm saying? You, you have authority. You're her father. But I was like, like uh, ants and word, kind of like, should I say something? I shouldn't say something. And God was like, you doing that is actually creating what you're thinking when you should stop thinking what you're thinking and just be her father because you got more good history than you got bad history with her. <clears throat> oh, I'm talking to somebody. And you didn't turn that one incident into two years. And guess how it stopped? When I stopped thinking that way and start go and start just acting the way I used to act when I was her father and everything was good and now everything is good. I'm talking to somebody. I'm not interested in telling you my life. I'm interested in telling you I got caught in a path. So now every day when I'm dealing with her, I'm dealing with her as if that incident happened today. And I'm recreating the day by thinking about you. I'm going to move forward. I just want somebody to get the victory. This is the point where we stop and you reflect. What is this thing you keep thinking about? What's the thing you keep thinking about personally that you did wrong, that you keep thinking about it, and because it's in the past, now you in the past. This is 2023, but you still stuck in May uh, 17, uh, 2002, 2020. You still stuck. Yeah, you did do it. It was wrong, but it ain't happening today. Shh, I want to stop. No more word. I want you to think. What's that thing you keep thinking about? I want to stop right now. What's that thing you did that you keep thinking about or you did to somebody that you keep thinking about and you hadn't gotten freedom from it? What's that thing? I want you to stop right now and look at that thing and let that thing go because it's a weight now. You can't go nowhere without it. And they keep showing up in places you don't want it to show up. And they keep showing up in moments that you don't want it to show up. And so it's right now, we're not going to get to the end of the sermon. We're going to do it right now. Whatever that thing is, I just want you to close your eyes. And I just want you to give it to God right now. You know who you are. You know what it is. Just tell God, God, I did it. I did. But why am I still tormenting myself about it five years later, ten years later? It's over. I did do it. It's, I w- if I had it to do all over again, I wouldn't do it the same way, Father. Come on, talk to God. Talk to God. What is it? No need to keep preaching. Talk to God. What is it? Deal with it. What is it? Get it, get it out. Tell daddy right now. Get it out. Huh? Get it out. Let, let today be the day where it's finally over because it's tormenting you. Just raise your hand if you know what I'm talking about. It, it's, just, it's coming up in places it shouldn't come. It's stopping you from being what you want to be and doing what you want to do. Hands down. Come on. Come, just keep talking to daddy. Ask. Seek. Knock. Thank you so much for joining us this week. For those who've expressed an interest in supporting our ministry, please use our cash app, dollar sign, a place of change, APOC, for your donations and tithes. If you prefer more traditional options, please visit our website at www.apocministry.org. 
where you can make your donation via PayPal, credit card, or certified check or money order. We look forward to seeing all of you for our midweek service Wednesday evenings at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time with Pastor T.J. Tyus. On behalf of our pastors and their families and your APOC family, we wish you all a very blessed week.